guys, it's Barry, and um, I wanted to bring to your attention, I had a few minutes here, I was just at a little place outside Cabrera called El Puerto, trying to pick up a couple of slabs of fish for tonight's dinner. I wanted to bring to your uh, attention uh, another article that I received yesterday from a subscriber that uh, forwarded me the article and said, I get it, I see what you're talking about, and it's true. Uh, the article, I'm just going to scroll on the old uh, phone here for a second. Uh, the, uh, the article's entitled, uh, 25 Must-Know Skills for Surviving, The Coming Nightmare When Something Extremely Horrible Happens. And uh, basic information about it, but, um, you know, nothing really out of the ordinary to learn. But the point is... The subscriber said, you're absolutely right, there's just yourself and a couple other people talking about um, plan Bs that include an exit strategy. You see, this is uh, another excellent example of what I refer to as linear thinking. All 25 points of this, not one of them, covers taking the time to open up a bank account in another country, should you need to exit a country should currency controls take effect. Not one point of these 25 basic points covers the need of everybody needing a second at least residency, uh, preferably a passport, as an exit strategy. Uh, most disturbing of all, the article doesn't cover anything about a plan B that entails a exit strategy. So should it goes into deep, uh, you know, uh, deep information about how bad it can get and this and that and how people are so unprepared. But it doesn't offer anything in a plan B about an exit strategy. Now, all through history, that's proven to be one of the most important things somebody could have at their disposal. The ability to leave if the situation gets out of hand. Now, I'm not certainly saying uh, expatriation or leaving is right for everyone. There is no plan. That's, it's not a one-size-fits-all deal here. But however, if people have the means and are looking for the best rounded plan B, certainly your preparation and weapons and this and that and food and what have you, off-grid living, I'm not saying any of it's wrong. I'm not saying anything about anything is wrong. I'm just trying to make it clear about choices. And for me, any plan B is not complete without an exit strategy should things get so out of hand that your best alternative for your own and your family's safety is to vacate the nation and seek another place. Uh, all through history, that's held true. Anywhere from Rome, Greece, World War II, any 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 catastrophe you want to throw at me that is a worldwide catastrophe, um, I think you'd have to be rather close-minded to debate the issue about uh, expatriation or leaving a nation to seek better living in another uh, nation to weather out the storm shouldn't be part of a plan B. And it, it brings me back to what I'm trying to explain, uh, stats are great, but I can twist stats to make them read any way I want to form any kind of answer I want them to read. Uh, an example with that would be, well, you know, people talk about the employment situation, how terrible it is. Well, okay, if anybody believes it's really around 5%, oh, good luck. I mean, uh, I'm not even going to go down that path. It's so ridiculous. But realistically, let's say if it's around 15 16%. Okay, if you take their statistic at about five and a half percent, let's go 12 just to make it somewhere in the middle and make this interesting. I could phrase it that there's 12 percent unemployment in a particular nation and people are going to go, that is incredible. The place is falling apart. That's terrible news. But I can flip that statistic around if I want to make a positive or a more positive outlook. And I can go, did you know 88 percent of the people that are looking for full-time employment in that nation are working. That sounds completely different than 12% unemployment. So stats are, stats are not a real challenge to twist and manipulate. Uh, you know, politicians, business people, uh, corporations have been doing this forever to get their point across, and it does work reasonably well. 
But the point I want to bring out, and I'll be making a post about this in the near future, is people don't ask the right question. You see, they're bringing up, again, an, another article, um, one of hundreds that are bringing up prepping, but none of them ever bring up the point of leaving. Now, uh, a lot of our subscribers uh, over in Europe right now, where they're facing riots that are running uh, in the hundreds of thousands daily because of their immigration issues along with their economy issues, um, a lot of those people are really second-guessing their decision, and a lot of them now have really stepped up to the plate at this late time to start immigration process, and they are looking at... But it's already, it's already started. Now it becomes, instead of a process where you're in control, it becomes a reaction. Instead of a proactive, it becomes reactive. And that's not a good place to put yourself. Another point, uh, getting back to people don't ask the right questions. When uh, I get an awful lot of uh, emails asking about the best way to prep and, and, and so on and so forth, and old Barry's not an expert in anything. I've been out of Western nations for about 35 years. So I'm not the person for advice to tell you how to survive in America or Europe. Uh, I can tell you through living in six countries and traveling, there are many developing nations that are absolutely going to weather the storm better than many capitalist nations. Uh, basically, from uh, without getting into detail, we will on the articles, but you can't take away something from someone that they never had to begin with. And you might want to keep that in mind when people start mentioning about crazy uh, riots in, uh, or, or uh, for our example, where Haiti, uh, oh God, if it gets bad. The Haitians have been living with nothing for generation after generation. You see, it's those people that are going to be affected the least when the shit hits the fan, should it ever hit the fan to begin with. You see, that, that's, that's what Western culture doesn't understand. They think they're all going to flood. These people have been surviving for six months on what most of you folks couldn't survive on for three days. So who do you think would be affected more? Somebody with 5,000 luxuries and 90% of them are taken away? Or somebody with basically no luxuries and survival, the, the very basics, but yet nothing really hiccups because they're living off the land anyway. You figure that one out for yourselves and tell me if what I'm saying doesn't make sense on that. And about asking the right question, a lot of uh, my questions um, pertain to arms. You know, I know America loves its guns, and I'm an advocate of gun ownership myself and being able to protect your family, so I'm not, I'm not here to debate the Second Amendment. Uh, I am totally pro-owning guns. But, but here's something, what I mean by asking the correct question. I'm receiving the wrong question, which is, what do you think I need for arming myself to best protect my family? Okay, understand the question totally. The, the question really should be, what is the percentage of the population that's currently prepared to withstand six months of surviving? And um, that's where you're going to find this thing dwindles down to less than 1%. So if you want to crunch numbers, uh, basically to get the information you're asking, let's do it this way. There's basically about 320 million people in America, more or less right now. Uh, crunching some more numbers and uh, going on various websites, there's anywhere from 315 to 346,000 weapons. So if you take the percentages of the people that are actually able to survive six months without, with just what they have and prepared to live that way in case there's any grid uh, disruption, uh, di dis you know, disruption of any kind, all of a sudden if you start crunching numbers, you're going to find every prepared person with a weapon will be facing 33.333333 equal weapons, more or less, of people that are not prepared. Okay, the question should be, how many people are prepared to withstand six months, a minimum of six months, of surviving on their own? That's the correct question that's going to lead you to believe you want one weapon going up against 33.33 weapons? See, everybody's got to eat. And when the masses who are unprepared, who are equally armed, more or less, start running into problem, 
if you think that's a good strategy, I'm not here to say right or wrong. I'm just here to open up linear thinking into more of a cylindrical uh, uh, type of thinking. If you think those odds are good, good luck, Daniel Boone. Have at it. I feel if people have the means to do so, spreading your portfolio into various nations as well as your feet, acting and voting with your feet throughout history has been one of the best means of protecting yourself. I'll give you another quick example before I turn off this YouTube, and that is mm, probably take the most recent example of an extreme worldwide event. You'd probably look at World War II. The whole world was affected. Would you have rather lived in Europe or where I'm from, Western Canada? Now, both were affected. You tell me, where would you, where would you rather have lived? And obviously, obviously, you would say, I'd rather live in Western Canada. Look what happened in Europe. But the, the point to take away from this is both nations were affected. So the correct question, again, you should be asking yourself is not, will I be affected? but rather to what degree will I be affected? That's where you're going to find many capitalist nations are going to be affected the most. This world is a giant transmission, and for the time being, for the limited time anyway, while America might be the planetary gear for a little while longer, you have to understand everything is linked. And I've always judged the transmission is it going to blow or not like I do when I wrench on my old truck if the transmission fluid if the temp gauge hits the fluid I use the fluid as the citizens when the citizens start to get hot that transmission's going to blow and another example which is perfect to prove my point look what's happening in Europe right now so I hope this gave you some sort of view to look at things from a different perspective um, we are abundant in food in, in our region, and this is probably the, the most important reason I live here. Uh, is any place going to be perfect? No. But you have to start asking yourself, what is this place going to be look at, looking like? Should this happen? And, and, and it seems to be heading in that direction. Uh, certainly, uh, the U.S. is going to follow Europe, but... You really have to ask yourself that. Am I really able to really hands down survive this? Or am I dreaming? Am I thinking? So you start thinking if you think you're crafty enough to, with the numbers, going up against approximately 33 times the weaponry from unprepared people. Um, you know, I wish I wish the best of luck, and I'm not saying you have to jump on a plane and leave. I'm saying if the option is there, that gives you a more well-rounded, structured plan B. I hope this makes sense, and I'm going to score some fish, and we'll talk to you another time. Until next time, this is Barry and DR. Bye.